Hey guys, and welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about how to do two port shunt through impedance measurements using the PicoTest P2102A, the Bode 100, and the J2113. If you're not familiar with the two port impedance measurement, it's a crucial piece to understand in order to do PDN measurements, power distribution networks to support your power integrity designs. If you're measuring a point of load, a power supply, a DC DC switcher, or a VRM, the two port shunt through method is the known gold standard to go to to do an assessment of your power rail, PDN, or even a passive model. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and head over to the lab. So to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the Bode Analyzer Suite. And you can see here, I already have it open. And all we need to do is we, really need, we need to select the impedance analysis tab. So I'm assuming you already have uh, the Bode Analyzer Suite installed in your PC. And if not, you can go online and download this uh, from Omicron's website, and I'll put the link in the show notes. But all you need to do is click the Impedance Analysis tab, and since we're doing a two-port shunt-through measurement, we're gonna use the this shunt-through tab. And you can see it's a two-port shunt-through as we're showing you here. And if you're ever confused on how to hook up uh, your measurement setup, they give you a nice diagram here, so in case you forget, you always wanna have uh, one port on your output and another port on your channel 2 there as just shown there and your dot is connected uh, as a shunt through between those two ports as shown here. Another thing that I'll emphasize is that if you're ever measuring power supplies and you're not sure uh, what the what the voltage limits are for your body, well Omicron has already put those right here uh, and they remind you every time you click this so you can recall okay what are the limits for uh, the front end of this box so you don't damage it when you're doing your measurements. Now, I will say one more thing. There are additional probes you can buy from PicoTest. So if you need to go higher than this 3.3 volts RMS, you can buy a 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X, or uh, other probes from PicoTest. And those are just attenuated. And you would just select this option where that series resistance is defined in the data sheet. And you just specify that in your measurement setup. So today we're using a 1X probe. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. I'm just going to hit discard because that's an old file that I didn't need before. And so first things first is I'm going to go in here and set up my sweet, my, my frequency. Um, 100 hertz is fine for what we're going to be doing today. Uh, the Bode 100 actually can measure out to 50 megahertz. I don't know why it doesn't default uh, to 50 megahertz, but that's something you always want to be cognizant of. So I changed that. And we're going to increase our source level to max. And we're doing this to maximize our dynamic range. And I'll talk about how we dial in our receiver settings in just a second. But first, I wanna talk about how we're gonna do our calibration today and what our measurement setup looks like. So if you can see here on the screen on the right, you can see here we have a Bode 100 and we have a two port probe here. And you can see it's hooked up just like the diagram showed you, except here we have the J2113. And this is our differential amplifier. There's a cable here that goes to a power supply that's being powered by 120 AC. Um, depending what country you're in, it could be 240, but this is uh, the power supply that's connected to power this differential amplifier. And you can see here I have the outside going to channel 2, and this is my other uh, port going to the other side of the probe. And to do our two-port impedance uh, calibration here with the Bode 100 using the PicoTest P2102A, we're going to do three calibration steps. We're going to do a short, an open, and a load. And to do that, we're going to start first doing the open. We're going to use these pads here in this uh, top white right quadrant of our, of our substrate. And then we're going to go down and do our load calibration. And the Bode 100 is a bit unique. Typically, with most VNAs, you're going to do a one-port match. But because we're using the Bode 100, we're going to use a two-port match. We're going to use this bottom right quadrant here. And so we're going to put our probe across here. And they're going to, there's a 50-ohm resistor that's basically set up as a shunt be between both ports. And the last calibration step is our short, and ultimately you can use this cow pad here, but today to increase our dynamic range, I'll show you that, I'm gonna use uh, this right here, which is five ounce copper, versus what is on this calibration substrate, which is only one ounce copper. And so you're gonna find what copper you're using for your calibration setup really matters in order to increase your performance. So let's go ahead and pull off this cap and get set up for our first calibration, which is gonna be open. And so you can see here, I'm just, I'm just setting uh, the probe uh, on the cow substrate, just like I'm showing you here. 
And this is a really nice browser probe. You don't have to use a probe holder like I'm showing you here. However, when you really set your receiver bandwidth down, which I'll talk about that also in a second, those measurements can take a bit longer to make. And so sometimes having a probe holder to hold the probe steady is a, is a nice um, enhancement to your overall measurement setup to overall just make things a bit more comfortable. And especially if you don't have the steadiest of hands, um, I don't know about you, but I definitely don't. Um, I was not born to be a surgeon or a doctor, which is why I like using the probe holder. Uh, you'll find that uh, using a probe holder can be quite forgiving and you're grateful you have it. So if you don't have one of these, I definitely recommend picking one up and adding it to your repertoire or your lab. So that way you can overall get uh, a bit more comfortable with using the probe. Because a lot of folks I find when I teach how to use the two-port probe, uh, they struggle when you get to the smaller pitch, right? So this two-port probe, it has a removable head and you can put in um, a head that fits an 0402 package, 0603, 0805, or 1206. Uh, what I have on there now is an 0805. And uh, when you get to the smaller pitch sizes, it's a little, it's a little more difficult uh, to get those on the pads. So another trick that I will actually emphasize here is that if you struggle to see if your copper pads are on there, you can use a flashlight and emphasize um, uh, the reflection of the copper on the probe tips and that way you can see with a bit more ease if your probe tips are on those pads or not and so I can see they are uh, another sanity check is what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this uh, continuous mode and what I expect to see is high impedance and you can see here for 250 ohm ports I have a high impedance uh, of, of what I'm showing you here on the screen with the red trace and I'm going to go ahead and turn off trace two because we don't need that. And just to make it a bit easier for you guys to see, let's go ahead and make that a bit fatter so that way it's a little easier to read in your screen. Okay, so I talked about coming back to the receiver settings. And in order to dial in your dynamic range to get the maximum noise floor, right, the max dynamic range to measure those really low impedance values, you need to dial in not only your source level, which I already did, but you need to dial in your receiver settings and your receiver bandwidth, right? And so to do that, what you, I want to point you to is this, this uh, uh, receiver power indicator here at the bottom of the screen. You can see receiver one and receiver two. And we can see receiver one really has a lot more um, power that I can actually um, add into the system by reducing my attenuator settings. And so what we want to do is we want to dial in our, our, our attenuators until the Bode 100 starts to basically uh, scream at us by saying that's too much and then go back one step. So clearly 20 is too much. So let's go down to 10. Looks like we still have a little bit more to go and let's go down to zero and zero is too much. You can see it says overload. So let's go back to 10. Okay, so now we have receiver one set. Uh, let's do the same thing for receiver two. And again, right, I have my, my probe here set on the open um, I, on the through pads, which we're going to use for the open calibration step. Let's go ahead and dial in receiver two. So you can see here, 10 dB is a bit much. So let's go, ba go back to 20 dB. And now we have our receiver settings and our source level dialed in for the open and the load calibration step. You can repeat this for the load, but I can tell you these settings are going to be the exact same for both the open and the load. The last thing we want to do is we want to increase our dynamic range by slowing down our receiver bandwidth, right? We're slowing down our sweep. You see that cursor going across the screen? That's our receiver bandwidth. And so what we want to do is we want to slow this down. Usually I like to do around 30 hertz for my calibration. If you're wondering what's the max you're going to get, um, the max dynamic range, it's actually in the data sheet. So if you go in the data sheet for the Bode 100, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the max value for the max dynamic range is at 10 hertz and so ultimately if you're calibrating at 10 hertz or slower you're getting the maximum dynamic range from the body 100 however that's a lot slower it takes a little longer to calibrate i find for most calibrations down to 100 micro ohms or even 200 micro ohm range it's it's very effective to use 30 hertz uh, if i need a bit more fidelity after i calibrate even at 30 hertz i can still slow down the receiver bandwidth uh, to really reduce the noise and increase the fidelity of my measurement. Okay, so now we're ready to do our first calibration step. And I like to use user range for lots of reasons. There's things that I can uh, tell you, but to keep this video short, 
I'm just going to advise you to use user range on this setup for all your calibration. And when you open in, when you open the calibration menu, you see there's really two options here, right? You have the through calibration or what I mentioned before on this right half, the open short load calibration. You can see we're going to stay on this side of this of this panel here. And the reason for that is because we want to maximize our, our fidelity and we, we're doing that by doing additional calibration steps to reduce the error terms in our measurement setup. Through Cal does not give you all the error terms that open short load does and so this is why we want to stick to this side. And really it's not that much harder or faster, um, or I should say slower, to do an open short load versus doing the through. The other thing I'll mention is that you're going to see here if you have a calibration substrate that has a different maybe a different load value, maybe it's 100 ohms or 75 ohms, you would set that here. And if you wanted to set the specifics of your short, you could also specify those things here if you wanted to. But since we know that our cow substrate here, the P2100A is 50 ohms, we're gonna leave that as is. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the open. And you can see here it runs pretty quick. We're already at almost 20%. And as that's going through here, you can start to think about what you need to do next, which is, um, really the load calibration. And so all we're gonna do, like I mentioned before, is we're gonna put our probe on these pads here, right? And so um, since I'm using the 0805, I'm probably gonna put them right there on those pads since that fits nicely. Sometimes you might find you can use those pads, uh, just depends on, on the probe that you're using and which pitch. And so if you're not sure, by the way, if you're landed on here, there's a couple tricks that I'll show you. Uh, one of the tricks that I like to do is I will close that window <clears throat> and just hit run continuous. And you can see here, I'm actually measuring around, <clears throat> around what, four or five ohms, something like that. No, oh, yeah, four ohms. And so th this tells me that I'm not quite on the pads correctly. And you can see here, I just made a minor adjustment and you can see I popped right up to 50 ohms, which is exactly where I want to be. Uh, looks like I have a little bit of jumbling going on there so let me fix that and oh I just made it worse so a uh, simple check here just put that right on there and so what I expect to see after I get this thing actually you can see here I'm struggling with this apparently uh, there we go um, so uh, all you want to see is 50 ohms verbatim right so uncowled you're going to see a result very close to 50 ohms based on the tolerance of that resistor now this is a very low tolerance resistor typically well less than one percent um, i believe what pico test put on here is a, uh, a definitely a sub one percent probably closer to 0.05 or something of that nature and you can see here it's very close to that we're at 50.9 ohms uncalibrated based on where i'm measuring here in that uh, 7k range so you can see now I have it on there. So if you're not sure if you're on there, this is a simple trick. You can close out your calibration menu and basically just put that back on there uh, and see what your, what your Bodhi's telling you and finish your last calibration step. So now we're gonna go ahead and run our load calibration. And it doesn't take too long to run. And then remember what I said, instead of using this short calibration uh, center pad here, we're gonna use this copper pad right here, which is five ounce copper versus the one ounce copper here. And it's, uh, you can see our load is done. So I'm just gonna set that on there just like so. And gonna go ahead and, oh, oh almost forgot, right? You guys gotta keep me honest here. So uh, remember what I said, you wanna dial in our receiver setting. So um, I'm gonna speed this up just so you guys can see this. I definitely wanna make sure I slow that back down uh, before I go do the last calibration step. You can see here receiver one still has a little bit of margin. I can decrease the power. Um, oh, nope, it likes that 10 dB mark. So ultimately what I'm trying to show you guys is that by doing it this way, by dialing in your attenuators and your source levels this way for each calibration step, you don't have to memorize or keep in the front of your mind what your calibration setup needs to be. Uh, so this is a simple way to kind of uh, apply a process that's a, a little bit more pragmatic to get a good result every time you calibrate and it really doesn't matter what VNA you're using. But this is a very, very good way and I find this very practical. Now, if you wanna write this down, receiver one, receiver two, source level for short calibration, receiver one, receiver two for open and short, that's fine, that's up to you. I'm just trying to teach you guys how to do this without having to work too hard. And you can see that our three calibration steps are now done. 
So we can go ahead and hit close. And the last thing that we want to do um, to, to really validate our cowl is really two steps. Step one is we want to uh, assess our noise floor of our measurement setup. And with the two port probe, when we're doing a noise floor assessment, again, I'm doing this on five ounce copper. I'm always expecting around that 10 to 20 micro ohm range, as you can kind of see here. And because we did a good calibration, we're gonna see a very flat result um, up to a certain point where you can start to see the inductance kick in that you can kind of see here. And so this is a very good noise floor. And so this tells me that uh, we have a, a really good dynamic range that's calibrated into our setup. And so now we're ready to measure a known dot. And measuring a known dot is something that I am not gonna show you in this video, but this is something that I, I will show you in another video. It's a very important step in order to ensure that not only is your calibration correct, but that you have a good setup of, and check it before you go on to do some real measurements and try to publish that data. So if you wanna save this noise floor measurement, which I always do, uh, you could just go ahead and hit it in the memory like that. And for now, I'm just going to call it uh, something simple like noise floor uh, P2102A and J2113. So I remember what my measurement setup was to do that measurement. Okay, so I have my noise floor done. Now we're going to go ahead and get our known duct. This is our known duct. All this is is a, is a mount and uh, there is a resistor on the back of this. If I take off this little sticky here, you're just gonna see it's a, a resistor. You can buy it off DigiKey. You can buy these mounts from PicoTest or make your own. And you can see here, it's just really a, a mount with um, two SMAs on there and some probe pads on the back. And this really allows me to um, either use SMAs if I calibrate it that way or two port probe to measure a known dot uh, of something I know. And so using the two port probe and a DMM and a power supply, I measured this earlier and I got around 290 micro ohms. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move these things out of the way. And I'm just going to lift up my probe here and set the probe right there on top of those pads. All right. Okay, so all right, I'm not quite on there yet. All right, so you can see I'm really close to that 290 mark right there by that green indicator. So I'm only off by three micro ohms. I would call this a great measurement uh, and a great calibration. And you can see how easy this really is to do calibration with the Bodhi 100 the J2113 and, uh, the, and the P2102. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.